Hey guys, System Air, and this is Encrypted. Hope you're all having a great day. Let's go ahead and jump back into this pretty cool packet. Uh, in between episodes, uh, the pack has been, I guess, released. It's full release now, which is pretty cool. The initial release had an issue. It's been since fixed with another update, 1.1, and uh, everyone is good to play. So on the initial release, I guess, uh, there was an issue with people updating from beta to the full release because a mod was removed. It's been since put back in. It was compact machines, actually. And it was messing up people's save files, but uh, that's been fixed now. So as long as you're on the 1.1 version, you should be good to go and good to play. So that is cool, and uh, that is awesome. Anyone who downloaded 1.0, you're fine. You just, yeah, you're good. You didn't have to worry about it. It was just people updating their uh, save files. So I guess that is the thing. Also, I guess two mods were removed as well. Occultism is gone, same as Nature's Aura. So we don't have our little rituals there anymore. You may notice I now have a blood altar from blood, blood magic. Because that actually replaced the, I guess, progression in the pack. So go to here. I, I already did this too. So I just wanted to kind of hammer through it because we worked on this in the last video. But yeah, the blood sigil here. Uh, polished black stone and some redstone inside the hex three cauldron. So you do that. Then you get a blood sigil. Then once you do that, you go ahead and get yourself a blood altar. Just like that. Get some manganese and some gallium. Showed that in the last one. So not a big deal. The only new material, I think, was this here. Scandium. So the scandium was right here, right? I think it was the, yeah, the yellow simulation blocks. You just need sulfur to make those, so pretty easy there. Then you go ahead and grab these lifeless andesite mixtures, and then your little sacrificial dagger here, put them in there, and they'll slowly convert as long as they have some blood in it. And the way you get blood in it, just use your sacrificial dagger, take some damage, and uh, it'll kind of raise the amount of liquid in there, right? So if you hold shift, four buckets. There you go. <laughs> make sure you don't do it so much that you kill yourself, though, because, yeah, that is a thing. But yeah, just a much easier way to kind of get your andesite much quicker, not as slow. You do have to eat food, kind of get your food up and your saturation, all that jazz. But I'm going to show you a way to do that really easy as well. So this mod over here, I just uh, made this in between videos. I was in the Discord for the uh, pack, and uh, I was talking to some people in the chat, and uh, they told me about this. I never knew about this mod, Culinary Construct, really cool. So yeah, you can just make custom foods kind of here. They're like custom foods. Doesn't really care what foods are in here as long as they have like saturation and stuff, right? So you'll be able to do that. Won't work on like potions and stuff, right? But uh, you put in bread and you can put up to five different foods and you want to put different foods because you actually get a bonus for the more variety, right? And then you can just get this random kind of food here. Cooked silkworm, bell pepper, spinach, apple, and mineral uh, berry sandwich. <laughs> so that's the thing. You can also use bulls as well and the saturation. You'll get like a little bonus for using a bull, right? So that is cool. And the bread, though, stack. So I'm just going to stick with bread, which is a thing. You can also name your food, too. So uh, I could just name that sandwich. I'm going to call it Sadness because I feel like eating silkworms would be sadness. So do something like that right there. Then you just have yourself a whole bunch of food here. And it's, it's, it's amazing. It's just great. It's just a wonderful thing. So, yeah, just really good food. Really easy. And uh, as you get better foods, you can put better foods in here. Things with more saturation rate. And uh, it would make even better stuff kind of the output. So... Really cool little mod. I thought it was pretty neat. But uh, with that, you should be able to get through the blood magic part. Really simple. The only other thing I think I did was uh, over here, right? I added one more ore to the, I guess, uh, the list there. Just because there's a mod in here. It's called Gobber. And you go to use on it right there. Makes these Gobber globs. And you do that. And then you can make this glass. But the thing I was interested in are these igots. Because you can use it to make a whole bunch of tools. As well as these weird rings and stuff too, right? So there's like this ring of swiftness. Ring of Return and stuff like that. So I'm just farming it up and uh, in time we'll take a look at that. And there's another variety in the Nether and another variety in the, what you call it there, the End as well. Uh, the filter was a little weird on it though. You had to go into here, go to here, add tags, and it was uh, Gobber. Here you go. When I first tried doing this too, I kept putting Goober or something, G-O-B-E-R. I didn't put the double B, couldn't hunt it down, but I think it's this one right here. Yeah, right there, I think. Don't ignore that it says Copper War. But it's this one right here. I think the copper, I don't even know why it's saying copper ore. We'll pretend it's uh, normal either way. That's how you do it. And uh, it just doesn't kind of show it correctly. So confuse me a little bit. Anyway, that is uh, pretty much all I did. So the first thing I want to go ahead and work on today, I think it's going to be the Tigger's heater. We'll go ahead and set that up. Then we're going to head to the nether and work towards getting a blaze burner. We need to get a blaze in this puppy. Then we'll be able to actually start the recipe for the anticide alloy. Not having to do it in the blood altar. Instead, we'll be able to do it with grape which is the much better way, right? So anyway, that'll be kind of the goal here. So we're gonna need uh, some stuff. First thing we're gonna need is uh, some growth. Let's go ahead and do that. So also a bunch of other stuff we'll get from the nether as well. So we're gonna be doing a little adventuring over there too. Did I not grab stuff out of here yet? I didn't grab clay. I did make a batch of clay, sand, gravel, 
copper and some other stuff, but go ahead and do that. This grow out here, we'll have to go ahead and smelt it down, but I'm gonna pick up about five stacks. There you go. Basically gonna set up the heater, then I'm gonna have to, I uh, guess, wait a little bit for it to uh, smelt everything down. But anyway, it's basically a way of doubling up the grow. So right now I'm going to do like a stack of the seared brick here pretty quickly with the uh, time in the bottle. But after that, I'm gonna try and do it a little more efficiently using the heater itself. I may actually go to 128 just so that's super fast. There you go, just uh, do your thing. There you go, cool. Yeah, the main point of the heater is to make the controller for the, what is it, the Tinker Smelter, right? And then it's also used to make a couple other things. Uh, one of the other things is to double up grout. So instead of getting one brick per, you actually get two bricks per. So it's uh, way more efficient. So I guess that's the other main thing there. Go ahead and grab you. You also need the uh, seared melter. Let's go ahead and grab uh, that puppy. Sweet. This is the kind of like the main controller for that. And I probably won't use the seared heater. So you could power this two ways. You could do it with a tank. Or you could do it with uh, like a tank of lava or this and put like coal in it. But I'm just going to use this tank here instead because I think it's way easier. Maybe grab a seared casting basin as well. That is good. That should be everything we need. Actually not. We need uh, a couple chests here. Go ahead and get uh, two chests. There you go. Then we'll go ahead and grab ourselves. What would be the other thing? Some hoppers, right? So let's actually grab that right there. Maybe one more. Just get this kind of automated at the same time, right? So that is good. Not that this is uh, very hard to automate at all. But anyway... <laughs> Go ahead, uh, where would I want it here? I want the output chest to be here. Go ahead and grab you. Let's go ahead and grab the wooden hopper. Pop that right there. That looks good. Then I guess back here we would have the tank. I already went ahead and grabbed lava too. We just grabbed that from the nether. We don't have to make it or anything, right? So super easy, especially with the biome we're in because it has those random puddles of lava everywhere. But anyway, let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and grab ourselves a faucet. Pop it right there. That's pretty much the setup there. We will end up needing a casting basin at one point. For right now, we don't really need it. And then anything else here, we'll need to take one sear brick puppet right there. There you go. Need to grab some gold. We'll have to make an eager cast. And then I guess we'll just need a hopper back here so we can kind of feed it automatically. Maybe put a chest up here. Then we should go ahead and grab one more seared brick and a lever just so we can kind of have this thing kind of automatically turn on and off too as well. Not automatically, I guess manually. There's nothing automatic about it. Anyway, go ahead and grab our lever there. Then grab ourselves a get of gold so we can make a cast here. We'll have to make ourselves a silk touch tool too before we actually take off so we can actually get the spawner as well. So that's one of the main reasons I need takers right now. Anyway, let's go into here. And no, oh, it'll be in my backpack. Got a tank of lava, right? Let's make sure that's actually in, uh, yeah, just tank mode. Here you go. Actually, why would I do that? Let's go ahead and pick that back up. Here you go. Let's put it in bucket mode. I don't have to bucket out of its system. Uh, bucket mode on, there you go. Then we just put the lava right in, there you go. That works. And that should start smelting down the gold there. Once it smelts down, let's hit this lever here, I'll set a redstone signal, cast off on the seared brick, destroyed the seared brick, but it left a Ica cast, which is what we want. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and put in all this group. And basically that's the doubling mechanic right there. They'll just turn every one of these rope into two of those bricks, right? So it's uh, right there, right? Yeah, two bricks per which is pretty cool, pretty easy, and uh, very simple. I may have to come back and uh, throw some more lava in here. Actually, what I'll probably do for right now is go ahead and grab uh, some fluid cables. Yeah, let's go, uh, I guess we'll just go pipes, right? That's what we're using in this pack. Here you go. Go ahead, grab buckets. Why is there a recipe for nine buckets? Who makes nine buckets at once? But anyway, <laughs> go ahead and do that. And then we'll also need uh, some fluid pipes. That's fantastic. We'll have to take this out of, I guess, uh, bucket mode now. So let's do off. Actually, let's move this as well for we do this because we'll end up probably putting our smeltery right beside it. Then I'll just be able to kind of pipe the both of them. Although this one will only get used for a short period of time anyway, right? It's very kind of short period. Anyway, in here we got, uh, oh, I made another tool here too. I could actually show you. Where's it at? Go over here, do that. Made this here, a morphing tool. This thing's pretty cool. Pretty easy to make too. So it's just a uh, green dye, blue dye, red dye, and a couple iron here. But once you have this, you can take all your wrenches and kind of combine it with it, right? So in here, I have my immersive hammer. This is my uh, pipe wrench from the uh, pipes mod. If you hit shift and Q, you can throw them back out. If you want to put one back in, you can kind of just do this right here. But this thing can basically hold all of your different wrenches, mainly wrenches, right, uh, into one thing. So that's cool. Does it actually have to go into the top of that? Is that the way that works with this? Actually, I'm not sure. Let's do this for a second. Let's uh, go back to our tool here. Sweet. I don't remember having to pipe it to the top of these, but that may very well be the way it works. But anyway, do that. Sweet. 
yeah, that's how it works. And also I have the uh, <laughs> completely wrong anyway, so let's actually go back into here. Oh, did I move my uh, wrench? Where actually, it must be right there. There it is. We'll set that to extract instead, break that connection, and then have to put it back again. There you go. That's the way I actually want it. But anyway, that'll handle our automation for a seared brick. That'll take a little bit of time. And uh, yeah, I'll probably just let that get done. And then we'll come back and uh, finish off our tickers, do a little bit of uh, upgrades, and then we'll head off to the nether. That's kind of the plan there. So I think we have enough seared brick to get going here. So I'm just uh, casting off for uh, molten copper. I guess copper ingots into the uh, melter here. With that, we should be able to go ahead and grab a seared brick, pop it in here, maybe right there. Then go ahead and just right click on that. And then we'll get ourselves a smeltery controller. So. That's gonna be our smelter controller. Really easy, really simple, and uh, already done. So that's cool. We're also gonna need uh, drains here. So let's go ahead and grab two drains, I guess. Go ahead and get two. I said two. Uh, that is good there. I wanna go ahead and drop off these four seared bricks because just to make sure I don't use them because I already need those later. Go ahead and uh, grab our bricks here and start actually building our smeltery. Actually, I kind of messed it up too, didn't I? I have this completely messed up. Let's fix this. Here you go. I need to have it back here. There you go. All fixed up. It's uh, crisis averted. Do that there. So yeah, really easy to kind of build the smelter, right? You just kind of put a, how big you want it on the bottom, right? It has to be like a, a square, right? Or a rectangle, um, basically. And then once you have that, just kind of outline it with uh, bricks. Corners don't matter. Don't need anything underneath these ones either. So that'll work. Go ahead and throw down our smelter controller. Go ahead and put our drains. Probably one there, one there. We also need a tank and uh, we'll probably put it on the ground level just because we have this right here, right? So we'll just put our right here. There we go. That'll uh, fill it up with fuel right there. And then we go up uh, probably two more levels with the amount of bricks we have, maybe three. I guess it doesn't matter too much. Just uh, heavy working smeltery. Then we're gonna go ahead and do a pickaxe upgrade. I guess two pickaxe upgrades. And then probably just go ahead and uh, pump out a bunch of brass because we'll need that uh, later in the pack anyway. Probably be the main thing we actually use the smelter for is going to be for brass. So that is uh, something there. Anyway, that is good. And that is good. So that is our smeltery. All high tech, right? Just doing its thing. Go ahead and grab this. Go ahead and pop one here. Pop one there. Probably go ahead and start smelting off some gold here. We are going to need three casts. So that'll be a thing. Have a lever. I'll need another lever here too, right? So let's go ahead and grab that right there. Got ourselves a casting basin. So let's put that one there. I guess I could go ahead and put this stuff back in here too again too. So I can start casting that off in case I want to make it taller. I didn't go very tall with this one either right now, you may notice, but uh, it doesn't really matter either way. Uh, let's go ahead and make a basin as well. I thought I had one of these, but anyway, apparently I did not make one. That is good. And we got our two levers, so that and that, right? So we're good there. So the first thing we need to do is uh, head down here. I don't know why I have two copper. Kind of makes me worried, but anyway, <laughs> that's good. We need a egot cast again. So let's go ahead and get one of them done. Then we're gonna need a stone pick head, uh, I guess cast as well. So just with the uh, the pattern table, right? So not a big deal there. Sweet. And then we'll probably need a sharpening kit as well. So I have the uh, stone repair kit there, just so we can make some brass ones, because that's what we're gonna be making our new pick head uh, pick head axe out of. It's not really that much of an upgrade either. It's really just a lot more durability. So that's the thing. The main thing we need is the silk touch, right? So. The way we're gonna get silk touch is gonna be this here. You take gold and copper, kind of combine them together in the smeltery, makes a uh, material called rose gold. We're gonna use it to make our uh, tigger's anvil as well, because uh, we need an alloy. Actually, I should probably do it this way because I, I need to kind of do this really quick right now. Is that off and that off? Good. Let's go ahead and uh, speed this up a little bit. Here you go. Because that hopper is gonna be super slow. Now, if they, uh, I think of it, here you go. Let's do uh, another batch. There you go. Got uh, eight blocks of rose gold there. We should be able to cast that off. Oh. Cast off, there you go. We'll just do it this way, be a much quicker way. Here you go, oh, don't speed that up. Speed that up there. I'm so efficient with my time. Anyway, here you go, maybe one more. I guess we only need like four of these cast off right now. So maybe that's where we'll stop. There you go, that is good right there. I'll do the other ones kind of automatically. Okay, so what we're gonna do is uh, go ahead and turn those, I guess one of them into it gets right. So we'll do that right there, drop that off. Make this stuff here, the silky cloth. This will be what we actually use for our upgrade. So that is cool. With these uh, rose gold here, we should be able to actually make an anvil. Oh, I have the seared stone on me too. I put three in the system and didn't even need it. Go ahead and make ourselves our, what is this thing called? Tigger's anvil. Go ahead and uh, grab that. Won't need uh, this Tigger station anymore. It doesn't really matter anymore. Go ahead and uh, pop that down. 
now that we have this, we'll go ahead. Oh, didn't I make five of these, man? I would like to have five. Let's go ahead and make one more. There you go. Because that's how much it takes. Anyway, go ahead and uh, throw our pickaxe in here. Right in the pickaxe slot. Just surround it with the uh, silky cloth. And now we have an effect on this called, uh, what is it called there? It's called silky, right? Yeah, silky. So the silky is going to be the silk touch. So that'll make it so we can actually get spawners and stuff, right? So that was kind of the main goal there. Next thing I want to do is uh, probably go ahead, turn this off. Start making brass as well. So we'll go ahead and pop you in here. Speed you up a little bit. There you go. Hopefully. Oh, did I? Yeah, I guess that's already done. Speed. Do that again. Do that one more time. Awesome. Got ourselves a ton of brass, which is awesome. Let's go ahead and uh, pop that out. Go ahead and grab our pickaxe head. Cast that off. Then probably switch that over to repair kits. Probably just make like 10 or so for it right now. Shouldn't matter. But then we should be able to go ahead and actually upgrade our pick as well. So... That is a big kind of upgrade. I think this is going to add a bunch of durability, basically. So this here is uh, 730 durability, I guess. It's a 630 by default. Just by adding the brass, we're up to 1230. So that should be really useful and uh, pretty awesome in that regards. And then we could just use the repair kits as well. We'll go ahead and uh, do one more upgrade here, then probably head to another, actually. So what I want to do is go ahead and grab some of those gobber ores that we got. I guess that the... I don't know what they are. What are these things called? They are the... Uh, gobber Globlets. Anyway, go ahead and head over to the main base, right? Let's do that. Then we're going to go ahead and turn this into ingots and then make a tool out of this as well because uh, that's pretty cool. We're actually going to do a ring as well. I saw this ring. Ring of Ascent provides the player with three minutes of levitation. Thought be, it might be nice to uh, use to get around some of the lava lakes as well, so not the thing. I think I made some feathers, right? So let's do you. Sweet, and then we go ahead and try to grab this here, the actual ingots, right? Yeah, I have to do this first, right? So you turn this into gobber globs, <laughs> which is kind of strange. And then we have to turn that into ingots, I guess. So let's do that. Don't know how many of these we actually need, so we'll just make a good little batch. Probably like 30 or so. I guess we made 33. Then we go ahead and make the ring. I'll try out the ring in a second, but anyway. Oh, we have to make the actual ring first, so I think the ring was just this recipe, right? You go. This is the base ring. Then you go ahead and make the actual, I guess, uh, special magical space ring. That's what I'll call it. Uh, we need four of these, right? There you go. I think we need eight. You go. We got eight of those. And then we should be able to just go ahead and actually craft this uh, Paxel here, which is a multi tool. So it'll be able to do pretty much everything. So I guess axing, shoveling, uh, picking, all that stuff. And I believe it's diamond level as well. So that'll work out. Cool. My main reason for wanting this uh, Paxel too is if you go to, I guess, uh, Gobber, so check that out, the Gobber mod, the next level of its ore requires a Gobber level pickaxe. So you have to have this pickaxe to be able to mine that stuff. So I just wanted to have that on me in case we run of that. As well as uh, while we're there, we run into some of those obsidian pillars that are around the lava lakes. I get tons of it. I could just vein mine it, right? So that's kind of my plan there. So anyway, that is good. I don't think we need anything else before we go. I'm just thinking of uh, anything else we need to do uh, before we leave, but I can't really. I'm just going to set that to automatically smelt off too because in time we'll need that uh, for crate anyway. So that's the thing. Oh, I didn't make uh, enough of these. I guess I need to stay for a little bit to uh, actually make some repair kits. Then we'll go ahead and head to the nether. Oh, there's one more thing I want to make actually before we go. I want a compass because I need to get nylium while we're there as well. So I want to have the crimson and the warp nylium. And the way we're going to do that is with a nature's compass to make our life a lot easier. Do that. Sweet. Go ahead and grab you. Go ahead and grab this puppy. Uh, right there. There you go. And with this, you just kind of search for biomes, right? So if I go into the other dimension there, go to, uh, say, warped, because that'll be one I want. Look for a warped forest. I'll be able to just hunt it down really easy. So you notice it's not finding one in the overworld, obviously, but we'll find it in the nether. So that's kind of going to be how that works there. So I was on my way to the fortress. There's one just to the south there, which is not too bad. But up there, I actually see uh, the warp nylium that I need to be able to grow the warp blocks uh, in the bonsai. So that's kind of the idea there. So we're going to use our ring here. Also, I brought my scanner. I put another upgrade in it. I put in a scanner module range, which is pretty cool. And I have the rare ores right now, too, as well. So I've been looking around for those uh, gobber blocks. I haven't seen any yet. But I don't even know if this will pick it up, right? So I'm not sure. I do have this upgrade as well. Which one is this? The scanner module block. So if I find one, I can actually shift or right-click it on the block. Or I, I think you'd actually put blocks in this too. Yeah, you do it that way too. But you could do it like this, right? There you go. Then I'll just scan for quartz, right? But I'm um, kind of hoping I find those blocks so I can kind of hunt them down a little easier. 
because there is an upgrade from that. I really want to make another ring there. But anyway, let's go ahead and try out this thing here, the Ring of Ascent. So apparently we put this in our offhand. Apparently you take no fall damage. It doesn't matter which hand it's in. So that's actually cool. There you go. And then we'll just kind of right click with it and just uh, kind of push forward. And hopefully we actually get to this uh, Nylium over here. You may be thinking to yourself too, that's just a forest right there. There's no warped or crimson Nylium in that thing. It's all this bedrock variant too. So yeah, those biomes are really cool, but sometimes you just want the vanilla blocks for vanilla things, right? So is that the thing? Uh, so I think it said shift to descend, right? Yes, yeah, so you just go down. Also, why is there a bow meal effect? <laughs> that's weird. And anyway, we won't worry about that. Anyway, I got my Nihilium, so that's one thing I wanted from this dimension. The other thing I really need, I guess, is just the, what do you call it there, these spawners. Everything else is just kind of perks, right? So depending on how well this ring works. Also, this ring was only supposed to work three minutes. I don't see any durability bar. I wonder if it's going to just uh, straight up last forever, because uh, I'd be okay with that. Not going to lie. Anyway, go ahead and uh, work our way towards the other uh, fortress there. I think it's down that way, right? Now, maybe I'll go up through this way. <laughs> kind of see how it works. Yeah, I've been all through that forest right there. Uh, that's where I got my initial crimson and warp from. But uh, now that we have that, we should be able to uh, pretty much automate uh, ender pearls, whatever we want to, actually, which is actually not too bad. Oh, there's a bunch more of it here. Must be this biome. Glowstone Garden. So that's a good one to actually hunt that down. So just as a little warning, too, from the past, right? So I've run into these before. These are from Nether's Delight, and they explode. So I think... Yeah, I've died to those before, just running into them. They are very, very nasty, and you don't want to mess with those. So, yeah, just something to be uh, definitely worried about and uh, concerned about. And uh, I think our fortress is right here, right? So let's go ahead and uh, try this out here. Uh, I need to go ahead and go into our thingy, Bob. Grab our portable. Grab ourselves some deep slate, because why not? Then we just use these as placement blocks, because that seems like a nice, easy way to go about that and then see if there's any spawners in this uh, fortress here. Hopefully there's some chests too. I'd really like to find some chests. Like I said, there's some OP um, trinkets and stuff that you can find, which would be pretty rad. I think there's actually a flight one as well that you can get. But anyway, I mean, we have at least makeshift flight for right now. What is that over there? Is that just a portal? What is that? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, so scared. Anyway, there you go. Nothing. Oh, we got a chest here. We must as well check this chest here. You never know what we'll find inside that. What do we have in this puppy? Nothing too good. Vampire blood. This is the trinkets right there. There you go. Nameless trinkets. Plus 15% attack damage. When killing a mob, you heal 10% of your hit points. So in a pack where you're actually fighting lots of mobs, that'd actually be really good. But uh, in this one, probably not so much. But there are other really, really good ones. And I'm hoping to find them. Oh, let's, uh, let's just go up. Oh, that's not the right thing. Let's uh, get this out of my hand. Here you go. Need to make sure I use that. It's a good thing I didn't just walk off the cliff. So I'm noticing those guys are spawning too. That's actually kind of weird. Because I thought nothing was supposed to spawn in any of these dimensions. Anyway, <laughs> that's the thing. So this fortress kind of sucks. Uh, there's no uh, chest here at all, unfortunately. Which is uh, not very good. Also almost died from that uh, blaze over there. I did have to... Uh, I guess I already broke my spawner. I broke it with the wrong pickaxe. Because I totally derped. And, yeah, not really much I could do about that now. This thing, at least, is 10 damage, so it should uh, handle these guys half decently if I don't actually just straight up die. We have no armor or anything at all, though, so touching them is actually very bad. But with that, we should be able to uh, go ahead and actually break that and actually get a spawner this time. So we got our spawner, which is fantastic. Now, I would like to still find some crimson. That would be uh, something that would be very nice, so... Probably head to that biome. It is actually not that far away, right? So I go to start search here. Go to uh, Crimson. There you go. Check that out. It's only 460 away. It looks like it's uh, that way. So I'll probably go ahead and head that way. Then maybe I'll leave. Maybe I won't spend all the time here for trinkets right now. Maybe I'll save that for the future. This place actually seems really dangerous. <laughs> just going to throw that out here. There's lots of plants and stuff that just randomly explode. So not sure if I want to play around here. Without Doc, uh, rate of flight is all I'm thinking, right? But anyway. Oh, I just randomly found one of these. What is this here? This is the Icker blocks from uh, Tinkers, right? Yeah, we could actually grab all these too, right? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Actually, I had this set to tunnel, didn't I? Let's go ahead and change it to uh, shapeless. There you go. Do that. That. There you go. Go ahead and grab these ones too, I guess. We have Silk Touch now too, so we could actually pick up the 
ones that grow them as well. So I guess I could technically uh, set up to grow these crystals as well, which is not too bad, I guess. But anyway, nice little, I guess, source of slime here. It would have been one of the ones I would have got if I found a Tinker's Island as well. Although that isn't uh, super necessary for me to find right now. Oh, that's one of the ores I was trying to find too. Oh, cool. Let's go ahead. Uh, where's that? Let's go ahead and grab this, right? Grab this thing. Shift right click that on there. And there, it's in there now. And if I go ahead and grab ours. Oh, my inventory is a mess here. I need, to, I need this thing. Let's go ahead and uh, sort that out. There you go. This thing makes that really easy. There you go. That's good. Drop you off. Drop you off. You off. You off. You off. And you off. And you off. There you go. I was looking for our scanner, right? So there you go. I can actually see it now. Then I can go ahead and pop that out and do this. And see if we can see any more of those ores. So it sees that one. I need to have that not in my offhand. Oh, we can actually find this stuff super easy. Cool, cool, cool. So you do need a filter for this. So as soon as you find one, you can find more. This is the uh, food one too. So this is like the food variant. You know, grab that. And yeah, you get this like gooey beef and stuff, right? Already got another gooey beef earlier. But uh, yeah, I can just grab this stuff. Look at that. We get this stuff. Now we can make ourselves a really good ring with this too. So it's kind of like uh, was one of my main plans here. So what I may do is just go ahead and grab this Crimson Forest, which uh, should be pretty close now. I think it's only a couple hundred blocks away, right? 200 blocks away in this direction. There's more explodey things that want to kill me. And then I'll go ahead and head home. So I'm back from the nether and we actually made out pretty well here. So we have our uh, bonsai pots now. We have the one with the warp nylium. So that one's being done now. Just the hopper and a stone axe, then the fungus and the nylium. Same over here too. So... We're getting all those resources now automatically, which is uh, fantastic because otherwise uh, I wasn't sure how we were going to do all that stuff. So that is good. Also, I went ahead and grabbed a comparator and in here we should have uh, some spawners. Maybe I went ahead and put the spawners in this chest here because I was kind of sorting, right? There you go. Here's all the trinkets I found too. I found the fertilizer one, the reverse guard. So sometimes it looks like it does, uh, it just reflects damage is what it looks like. That's the poison one. This one looks really cool, the crack crown. There's the sleeping pills, uh, phantoms, that wouldn't be any good in this pack. Uh, triggets, that's the experience balls one. Uh, ambiguous hands, no water. And then this one here, the vampire blood, I didn't notice that too. It's actually 150% damage, but it makes you allergic to the sun. So you take damage from the sun. So that one's actually pretty uh, dangerous, right? By the way, I want to go ahead and put this one on actually. So do this raid. Oh, it was a trinket, right? Pop that in there. And it seems like you instantly move faster as soon as you wear it. So that's actually cool. And I'm not sure. I think I might get more hearts when I wear this as well. Yeah, I'm getting way more hearts. Yeah, so I'm not sure exactly what it's doing. But it says 50% more stats. And I'm definitely getting more stats. You know what I mean? Because I am definitely faster. I'm definitely that. I wonder if I'm actually getting more strength and stuff too. Because that would be actually really rad. Holy moly, that gives you a lot of hearts. I got, I got a lot of hearts now. Anyway, that's the thing. Uh, this here, I'm going to go ahead and throw that down. I need a lever as well, so let's go ahead and do that. And uh, we'll go ahead and actually get our spawner going here too, right? So we need the, not spawner, we, well, I guess we got to get the spawner going, but we need to get, uh, what is the thing? The actual blaze burner, right? So get that, should be pretty easy. We'll just do that, that. By putting a comparator on the spawner, I'll make it so it's uh, redstone activated, so I can just use a lever for right now. Just do that. Kind of curious if we do more damage with uh, this now too, that we have uh, that crown on. Come on, spawn in. Might be a little slow at first. You can use uh, sugar to speed this up as well as clocks. So you see there's a min spawn delay that will be reduced by sugar. Actually, it doesn't take much sugar to do that. Now, it doesn't seem like I'm doing like a ton of damage like I was hoping. Although I'm doing pretty good damage. 15? That's not bad at all, actually. There you go. We got uh, four of those. I think I need one more. But you can use sugar. So let's go ahead and grab some sugar here. I won't bother with clocks right now. Let's do... There you go. Go ahead and uh, maybe grab a good amount of that. I don't have a ton of this right now. I haven't been uh, actively farming it, but we can release the min spawn time. There you go. That's good. And then we'll go ahead and uh, finish these guys off. And then hopefully get our other blaze rod that we need. Yeah, we actually got five. So that's actually all we needed right there. I'll just leave that down there right now. Probably end up doing some kind of automation with that in the past, but not in the past. I don't know how we're going to do it in the past. But apparently we're going to get a time machine. Uh, in the future. So to make this thing, we have to make some iron sheets. Uh, I thought we could do this with uh, regular iron, right? Go ahead and check that out. Actually, I know the recipe. Let's go ahead and uh, break this thing here. Do that there. This is like this weird little hammer we could do uh, 
Actually, sheets. No, it'd be plates from uh, Immersive. Let's go ahead and grab some sticks then. There you go. It's this uh, recipe right here. There you go. Go ahead and do that, that, and that. Sweet and sweet. And with this, we could actually make uh, like iron uh, plates, right? So let's go ahead and grab iron here. There you go. And then pop that puppy here. And I think it's like that and that. Sweet. Let's go ahead and actually grab like four. That should be good there. And then we actually go ahead and grab our empty blaze burner now. Cool. And with this, we can actually run back down to our spawner and use this on a blaze. And then we will have our actual working blaze burner. So that is cool. It was a little bit of work to get it, but uh, we have it now, right? So that's cool. Actually, can we speed this thing up? I'm a little afraid to. Will you, will you just go faster? <laughs> Don't know if that works or not. Anyway. Oh, I didn't mean to kill that either. I just bad habit. Use that. There you go. We actually get them. Awesome. And then we'll just go ahead and close that. So we got our blaze burner. So that is fantastic. So now that we have our blaze burner, let's go ahead and see if we can actually set it up here. So I'm just going to put it down right here. One thing I'm not sure about actually, I want to go ahead and grab like oak. I can't remember if you just use wood on this to power it. I can't remember if that's a thing. Yeah, it probably just doesn't power very much, but you do have to power this thing as you're using it. I was just kind of curious about that. I went ahead and made the mixer. So I have the mixer here. Just took uh, some more of those plates, a little bit of andesite, so I took care of that, as well as the cogwheel, which uh, were just shafts, right? So just uh, kind of that recipe right there. You also get this basin uh, for free once you do the quest there. So I got that done. Then we're gonna go ahead and uh, grab this andesite here. Jump up here for a second. And then I guess I'd have to do like something like that. Sweet, make it all jank, because we need this thing kind of aimed down. And I haven't made the wrench yet. So anyway, let's go ahead and grab our actual mixer. That looks good. I made the extra cogwheel, just so I can put the cogwheel, kind of connected, oh, that's completely wrong. That won't work at all, don't do that. We need to put the cogwheel right there, there you go. Then we put the hand crank right here, and this should work, and we'll fully automate this, but this is just for right now, right? So it's kind of like temporary, right? Then we should be able to grab the recipe here. I believe the recipe was just uh, andesite. Is there anything in there? Like, I feel like I'm missing, oh, there's the rest of the andesite there. I thought maybe it was in the uh, basin there. Uh, the recipe was uh, for the andesite, is right here right so two andesite to two iron nuggets right so i already have some iron nuggets here maybe we'll do like a 16 see if we could actually get like a batch of 16 going at once right you go we'll just power it with a blaze rod too because we have that i think it gives a little more time anyway right so go ahead and do that go ahead and just uh pipe these in ever so slowly why did i why do i keep using wooden hoppers i'm so so used to wooden hoppers actually being faster than these they seem so slow in those back Anyway, that is good there. That should be the correct ratio on the recipe there. Then we have everything set up. I don't know what I'm looking for. I should have to... Wait, what? Wait, I have everything... Oh, I haven't uh, fueled it yet. Let's go ahead and fuel it. There you go. Then try that. There we go. Then we just sit here and kind of right-click this thing. And that should actually make us uh, 16 out of sight as long as we have enough fuel to kind of do the entire process, right? Actually, I don't know if it has to be going the entire time or not, if it just has to be going at the start. I guess we're going to find out here in a second. But uh, we should get a good little batch of andesite, and we could go. And we'll be able to set up power for this, uh, like I said, probably in the next video. And we'll end up automating this whole process, but it was all about getting to this point. And wait, there you go. Got eight. Well, I only made enough for eight. Either way, it doesn't matter. We got a good batch here. So way, way easier than having to do it with the blood altar or with the uh, rituals that we had before. And that really was my goal, because I didn't want to grind out andesite at all. So we are at that point, and uh, we're looking pretty good here, actually. We even have Arbor, man. We're just living the life all around. But we'll come back in the next episode, probably fully automate this, and then probably start working on casings, and then we'll be into tech, right? So we need to do stuff like that. Then we'll end up uh, doing stuff like this. And then there's other stuff as well, right? we got to do these casings as well. So anyway, probably go ahead and actually end this one here. So as always, guys, like this video, please hit that like button. Really liked it. Hit that subscribe button. It is always appreciated. I want you guys all to have a good one. See you guys in the next video. Later. There we go.